Hey YouTube, Zach here, Professional on Earth. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the AT3D K280 3D printer. It has a 280mm build diameter and a 600mm height. So let's get right into this video. Okay, let's get right into this review. Uh, the AT3D K280 printer is a uh, great printer, I'd say. Uh, but I would not recommend this printer for beginners. Uh, this is more of a uh, for a tinker or maybe a little bit intermediate printer. So when you have a few more printers, I'd recommend getting this printer just because you know the build space is nice, but the instructions were not that clear. Uh, so like I said, the instructions that came with this was uh, a single A4 piece of paper, double sided with color, about six uh, photos, uh, talking about either how to assemble this, assemble this, or just showing like uh, what everything should look like. Uh, you know, with a little bit of ingenuity and uh, knowing how to build a Delta printer like I had the BQ Costa Plus, I was able to actually complete this printer and get some fairly decent looking prints raw right off the bat. Uh, so the prints did come off quite well. I'll go ahead and throw in some high res photos. I'll take up this Benchy that I took, I created. Uh, I also do have a really tall rocket that I printed uh, using most of the build space. Uh, I'll take a picture of that to show that, uh, the build space. did come with uh, some two uh, cooling fans, uh, 24 volts, ran along the Bowden tube, which I have here. Uh, these did not come with it. The, the bottom two were created uh, by HE3D, uh, designed by them. Uh, these were actually from the Facebook group, which I'll go ahead and link down below also. Uh, this just helps keep these fans out of the way, because the original design, uh, you weren't able to get the full build space volume because these fans protruded out and would hit the belts when you went all the way out. And also, you had to print a spool holder, which HE3D did provide the STLs for on their figures, uh, which works out quite well. Uh, the printer does come with a LCD screen. Uh, I was not able to mount it the way that I mounted the heated bed, which I did differently, because uh, it came with a piece of plywood, which I put down, then I took the heated bed plate Stuck that down with a little bit of a spacer, which I used the Bowden tube, which fit the M3 uh, bolt through, which then allowed this to be fastened down. And it does have a piece of glass that came with it, which I'm using the silicon uh, thermal pad to stick it down, which gives it a good stick, as you just saw. And that just gets set down right there, and it doesn't move around. Uh, so this does not have linear rails, but it does have the linear guides, pulleys, all the way around, which is then connected with these belts. Uh, one thing I'd like to note, in the build I forgot to do this, uh, there is actually one side of these is a concentric, or it's like an offset uh, nut, which you can tighten with a uh, wrench, and it allows this to be super tight, and it doesn't wiggle around on the uh, uprights, which I was a problem I originally had with the printer when I was first trying to print with it. So let's go into some of the uh, pros of this uh, printer. So the nice pro of this is the really large build space of 280 by 600 high that allows uh, for a new dynamic of your printing uh, capabilities with some super tall prints. Um, another pro of this printer, I'd say, is the 24 volt system. So it does have a 24 volt uh, power supply and that allows for some super quick uh, heat up times. So I'm gonna get this heated bed plate to 60 degrees C in roughly two to three minutes, which is super helpful and nice. Uh, hot end heats up quite quick also. Um, another pro of this printer, I'd say, is the $400 uh, price. It's roughly $400 US, uh, which is very good for a, such a tall printer that had aluminum extrusion and has a printer, uh, a nice 
build flight. One of the cons of this printer, I'd say, would be the actual height, though. So it does need a little bit of cross bracing. As you can see, it wiggles a lot. So when you're moving quite fast, like a delta would, you're actually going to lose a little bit of build quality, which I can, I'll show you on the bench a little bit towards the top where it, it had to move quickly across and tap for the, uh, the actual arcing part. Because when a printer moves, it was shaking quite a bit. But that's a super simple fix with some cross bracing, which I am going to try using um, some 5mm or 8mm uh, threaded rod with some 3D printed mounts that will go on and just make sure everything stays together. And I guess another one of the cons, like I talked about earlier, would be the actual instructions. Since the instructions were uh, left up to interpretation with only a single sheet of paper, it kind of made it a little bit hard to actually build this printer because I definitely did have quite a few extra parts that I didn't really know where they went. But as you can see, I got the printer built and working and looking nice. So overall, I would recommend this printer uh, to anyone that's uh, intermediate or uh, really likes to tinker around with uh, 3D printers. Uh, the build face is really nice. Uh, a few things that I am going to be trying to upgrade in the near future is I'm going to be trying getting a different extruder which allowed me to print a flexible filament through the Bowden tube, which should be like the Voron uh, extruder. I also have new step motor drivers I'm going to be installing, which is the TMC 2100 step motor drivers, which should allow for some quieter printing, since this does uh, support, or have currently the A4988 step motor drivers. Uh, the actual motherboard of this printer is the MakerBase MKS Gen L which actually is a really nice uh, motherboard, which is, eight, uh, I believe, 8-bit. So it runs Marlin, or I'm running Marlin, which it did ship with the Repetier uh, firmware, but I was not able to get it to print nicely with that. And I just knew Marlin better, so I made my own Marlin code, and I uploaded it to this. And now my printer works fine, and I was able to get it printing within five minutes after building it. Um, another upgrade I'm going to try doing in the near future is I'm going to be taking, uh, replacing this with a TFT 3.2 inch uh, uh, touchscreen, which will be super nice and useful. And currently I've just been printing everything with the SD card that came with it, which is super uh, helpful so you don't need to have it connected to your printer. Uh, something I did forget to mention is it does have auto bed leveling, so you just attach the uh, foam probe to the bottom of the nozzle like that. And you'll go ahead and click auto leveling within Marlin or whatever software you're using, and it'll just go around and probe and figure out your uh, bed leveling. Okay, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And please look into buying this printer if you are interested.